California has a huge water problem, and climate change is about to make it even worse. So how is the state planning to fix it? Well, this is the Delta Conveyance Project, a massive tunnel mega project that would be able to help mitigate the effects of rising sea levels, climate-related changes in weather, droughts, and potentially even major earthquakes. But how exactly is it going to do all of this? And is one tunnel really going to be enough for what they're trying to do here? I'm your host, Regis, and today, let's take a closer look at this huge mega project. Before we can talk about the Delta Conveyance Project, we first have to understand what's actually at stake here. The state of California is massive, and we don't mean that just by its physical size alone. This place is so huge by virtually every metric, to the point that it's usually more intuitive to compare it to actual full-fledged countries instead of other states within the United States. When it comes to population, for example, California has roughly the same number of people as the entirety of neighboring Canada at somewhere around 40 million residents. Another way to understand California's sheer size is by comparing its economy to that of the richest countries in the world. Just this state alone is enough to become the world's fifth largest economy, beating out global powerhouses such as India and the United Kingdom. This insane wealth is largely attributed to the fact that California's major industries such as agriculture, trade, entertainment, and technology are some of the biggest, most advanced, and most productive, not just in the United States, but in the entire world. But looking at the geography of this place alone, it's kind of difficult to understand just how California has managed to grow this big and this rich, despite an existential problem that has continuously threatened the entire region. A problem that has plagued even the very first settlers that inhabited the area thousands of years ago. And this problem has only gotten worse, as its population and industries have skyrocketed to what they are today. Now, to understand why this water problem exists in the first place, let's take a look at this map. Most of California's rain and snowfall happens in the mountainous regions up north, and because of this, as much as 75% of the entire state's available water supply is also located here, in areas north of Sacramento. Now, normally this wouldn't be a huge problem, as population centers are usually located near these sources of water, such as rivers and lakes, but an overwhelming majority of California's urban and agricultural water demand is actually located in the southern two-thirds of the state, so basically this whole red area in places such as the Central Valley, Los Angeles, and San Diego. So the question now is how has California managed to sustain its ever-growing population and industries despite this inherent lack of water resources down south? The answer is pretty simple and pretty complex at the same time. Simply put, the abundant water supply from the north is just transported down to the south where the demand for this water is located. But this is obviously easier said than done, especially given the uniquely mountainous terrain of the state. The complex part of this answer comes with just how exactly this water is transported over these huge distances and varying types of terrain. Throughout the entire 20th century, the state of California has been building a vast network of interconnected canals, aqueducts, dams, and pipelines, which are all designed to redistribute the abundant water resources in the north towards the fast-growing population centers in the south. This elaborate system is made up of many different private, federal, city, and state-owned infrastructure projects, which are all honestly just too much to fit into this one video. Maybe down the line, but not today. So instead of going over every single one of them, we'll only be talking about the biggest and most important ones. And don't worry, we haven't forgotten. We're still gonna get to the Delta Conveyance Project in just a second, we promise. Now, we start off with the Central Valley Project, or the CVP. The CVP is a federally owned water management project that was first conceived back in 1933. It was created in order to supply both drinking and irrigation water to the many farms and towns within the Central Valley. About 75% of the project's water is used solely for irrigation, while the remaining supply is reserved for municipal use and serves as many as 2.5 million people per year. The entire project consists of more than a thousand kilometers of canals, as well as a total combined capacity of more than 2.2 gigawatts spread across various hydroelectric plants. Another key component of California's water infrastructure is the California State Water Project, or more commonly known as the SWP. 
the SWP is a state-owned water management project that was created in the 1960s as a response to the fast-growing populations in the southern parts of the state, and especially the city of Los Angeles. Unlike the CVP, the state water project is primarily used for urban areas and industry, with as many as 27 million people directly benefiting from this project. One major component of the SWP is the California Aqueduct, which stretches a total of 715 kilometers across the state. This structure begins just south of the Sacramento-San Joaquin River Delta and branches off into three separate paths, coastal, west, and east, providing a majority of southwestern California with direct access to the water resources upstream from the delta. With more than 70% of all Californians directly relying on these water infrastructure projects, it can be fairly safe to say that one single failure within this entire system could prove to be quite catastrophic. And with both the Central Valley Project and the State Water Project having infrastructure that's more than 60 years old, the chance for these failures occurring in the near future becomes even more likely. Especially so given that California is expecting at least one major earthquake with a magnitude of 6 or potentially even greater in the next 10 years. This makes already stressed infrastructure even more vulnerable. But the problems with these systems don't end with just the age of the infrastructure. There's also the issue of climate change, bringing unpredictable rainfall patterns and longer periods of drought. It makes sense, right? What's the point of a complex system of canals and aqueducts if there's no water to transfer in the first place? Well, it's finally time to talk about the main subject of this video. This is the Delta Conveyance Project. To combat every single one of the previously mentioned problems, California's Department of Water Resources has come up with a plan to upgrade, disaster-proof, and future-proof the supply of water south of the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta. But before we take an in-depth look at the plan behind the massive Delta Conveyance project, we quickly want to thank CyberGhost VPN for making complex and in-depth videos such as this one possible in the first place. Have you ever used public Wi-Fi and felt totally unprotected? Data breaches and malware infections could be just one click away from you losing all of your important data. But luckily, there's a solution. CyberGhost VPN protects you against hackers and data brokers that want to sell your information online. With CyberGhost VPN, all of your traffic goes through a secure VPN tunnel, your IP address is hidden, and your data is encrypted, giving you a high level of online anonymity and military-grade security. Thanks to CyberGhost, you can also access all kinds of geo-restricted content, YouTube included. Simply change your online location, and you can find better deals online, play games blocked in your region, and even access blocked libraries of over 40 streaming services like Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Disney+. CyberGhost's 38 million worldwide users have made it one of the most highly recommended VPNs on Trustpilot. Over 21,000 people have rated it, and it has a rating of 4.3 stars. CyberGhost VPN is available for all platforms, Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and many others. And one subscription can be used for seven devices, so you can even share it with your family and friends. With our exclusive link, cyberghostvpn.com slash megabuilds, you get their best deal ever. Just $2.03 a month, plus four months free, which is 84% off. There's even a 45-day money-back guarantee, so you literally have nothing to use. It's a great product. We here at Megabuilds can definitely recommend it. And by signing up using our link in the description, you also help us to create higher quality videos just like this one. Thank you again to CyberGhost VPN for sponsoring this video. And now back to the ambitious plan of the Delta Conveyance Project. This project does exactly what its name suggests. It would redirect fresh water from the Sacramento River and carry it under the Delta through a tunnel that would lead it to an existing reservoir. While this idea of diverting fresh water from the Sacramento River to reservoirs isn't new, this project focuses on upgrading and modernizing the system to make it more efficient and reliable. The Delta Commands project would be a significant enhancement to the existing state water project facilities in the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta. This is a project that would aim to improve the reliability of water supplies and deliveries from the state water project. This would be by addressing the, the looming challenges of climate change and sea level rise which are forecast to reduce state water project deliveries by almost a quarter uh, by 2070. Now, the project would also guard against potentially catastrophic disruptions due to large seismic events, 
and that could completely shut down water exports south of the Delta for months or even years, depending on the conditions when, when that type of event occurs. This is Graham Bradner, the executive director of the Delta Conveyance Design and Construction Authority, who helped us with the research for this video. Hi, my name is Graham Bradner. I'm the executive director of the Delta Conveyance Design and Construction Authority. I'm a registered geologist, a certified engineering geologist, and certified hydrogeologist in the state of California. I've worked on large water infrastructure projects in Northern California for over 25 years. So now let's take a look at the exact components of this massive project and how they're all gonna work together. The first component of this construction would consist of two new intakes along the Sacramento River that would be used to direct water into the system. Also included in the plans are flow control features and sedimentation basins that would prevent sediment from settling further into the conveyance system. Also, these intakes will be equipped with fish screens along the side of the river that would make sure that not even the tiniest little fishies could accidentally be diverted into the conveyance. The next and probably most difficult component of the project to construct would be the tunnel that would stretch a total of 70 kilometers from the North Delta down towards Bethany Reservoir to the south at a depth of somewhere between 30 to 40 meters below the ground. The 45 miles of tunnel would be constructed with tunnel boring machines. Uh, the crown of the tunnel would be around 100 feet, 100 plus below ground surface. The concept would be to construct the tunnel as part of four reaches constructed simultaneously. So there would be four separate tunnel boring machines excavating simultaneously to complete the full 45 miles. Okay, but why is the tunnel being constructed so deep underground? The depth of the tunnel is defined by the consolidation of the soil. We want to construct the tunnel down in, in more consolidated soils uh, that would not be subject to liquefaction. So the depth of liquefaction is certainly a driver in considering the depth of the tunnel. In case you don't know, liquefaction is a process where soil loses its strength and stiffness because of extreme stress caused by, for example, an earthquake. When this occurs, solid materials such as soil behave as if they were liquid, kind of like quicksand. And then also there's uh, peat organic soils are pretty predominant in the Delta and we want to be below any of those types of materials. Those are not quality engineering materials and we want to be excavating below the depth of, of those peat soils. Now, together with the tunnel itself, various maintenance shafts will also be constructed along the route, which will be used both during the tunnel boring process and after the tunnel itself has been completed. Finally, the last key component of the Delta Conveyance Project will be the Bethany Reservoir Pumping Plant, which will be responsible for lifting the water out of the conveyance system and pumping it into the existing Bethany Reservoir. Aside from the pump itself, the plant will also house all of the electrical and mechanical equipment that's necessary for the operation and maintenance of the entire facility. As it stands today, the entire project is estimated to cost as much as $20 billion. And although things are still very much in the early planning stage, the Design and Construction Authority has already managed to finalize their environmental report. And after they complete a few more major permit activities, construction could potentially begin sometime in 2029, with an estimated completion date somewhere between 2042 and 2043. Which, to be honest, is a pretty long time for a project of this size. But the question still remains, how exactly will the Delta Conveyance Project solve the problems of water insecurity rising sea levels? The current system in place with the State Water Project has historically been based on the runoff patterns of the Sacramento and San Joaquin rivers. And the problem is that because of climate change, these well-defined and predictable patterns are now changing drastically. We're seeing flashier storms, we're seeing more intense storms separated by longer periods of drought or in some cases more frequent major storms passing through one after the other. So the Delta Conveyance Project would add new intake facilities on the main stem of the Sacramento River. That's a very different condition than the existing intakes on the South Delta, which are uh, down in some of the, the terminal sloughs and not on the main stem portions of the river. The state could utilize not just the South Delta conditions, but could also activate the new intakes in the north to take advantage of those infrequent high flow events and capture more uh, water and put it into storage for future use. Another potential benefit of this project would be to serve as a reliable means of transporting water across the Delta into the State Water Project in the event of a major seismic disruption. Unlike the canals and aqueducts that are currently in use above the ground, this new tunnel would be able to withstand major earthquakes because of how deep it's been constructed underground.
Despite all of these potential benefits for the long-term water security of California, many people are still very much against the project because of its impact on daily life and the local ecosystem. One major criticism against the Delta Conveyance Project is the potential reduction of the flow of fresh water in the Delta. Many opponents argue that the amount of water that would be diverted away from the Sacramento River could cause salt water from the Pacific Ocean to enter the Delta system and reduce the overall quality of the water in the surrounding areas. Farmers from the Delta region are also concerned that the project would threaten the already dwindling supply of fresh water that's used for irrigation. And as per usual, there's also the issue of environmental and ecological degradation that would occur once construction begins. Even though the project would make use of an underground tunnel to transport water across the delta, construction work on the intakes, maintenance shafts, and the pumping station would still, without a doubt, displace many different animal species and convert farmland into concrete plots. It's even been recorded that as many as 35 species of native plants and fish, such as the Delta smelt, have already been added to the list of endangered species because of the various water infrastructure projects that have been built in the Delta over the last few decades. But according to the Design and Construction Authority, the project has already gone through a thorough environmental review, and all aspects and matters of consideration for environmental protection have already been implemented in the project's plans. The siting studies considered a range of considerations, so the range of factors of current land use, existing infrastructure were major considerations, as well as geotechnical conditions and other understandings about the soil conditions, and additionally significant environmental factors were all considered as part of the siting studies, and then were even further considered when we laid out the, the various configurations for the components of the project. Whether you're in favor or against the construction of the Delta Conveyance Project, one thing is for certain. California is running out of water, and fast. Unless something is done as soon as possible, the water security of this state with almost 40 million people could potentially be at risk. But what do you think about the Delta Conveyance Project? Do you think that it would finally be able to solve California's water problem? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you want to try CyberGhost VPN, make sure to use our link in the description. CyberGhost VPN will protect your data while you browse and give you full access to all blocked content on the internet. It's a great VPN and it's a great deal for $2.03 a month and 45 days money back guarantee. So it's totally risk free. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.